Okay, Battlefield of Eternity, Masters Clash time, everybody. We have the actual group stage now, so the eight teams that are still in the competition, they have been decided on, and now they are playing a full-on round robin in the group stage, and uh, these are all best of two matches that are being played out. So we have the usual system, you gain two points. If you lock in a 2-0, you get one point if you tie with your opponent, and you get, you guessed it already, zero points if you lose and get your ass kicked. So, Chili Mountain is going up against Inting for Ruby in the first match of the day, and we're starting things off with Battlefield of Eternity. Not gonna lie, I gotta adjust my brain a little bit to this not being better madness. <laughs> I had the same problem in another match recently. I was just sitting there, I was like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. There are heroes that are not banned. You can actually pick everything now. Okay, okay, got it. So, yeah, we got Diablo banned and we got Tracer banned here. And... I... Wait... What? Alright, so apparently we're playing with a couple of subs today as well. Chili Mountain... Honestly, from the looks of the, the websites that I looked to, it seems like Chili Mountain has now a deal with Team Wa. So Team Wa is actually not playing under their old name, but is playing under the name Chili Mountain again. Uh, but then I'm looking at the lineups right now of the two teams and I gotta say that it seems like we have a couple of sub players today There's quite a few missing on the side of the blue team amongst others. The Equaza isn't here, but yeah, ending for Ruby It will be interesting what they can pull off here and Yeah, I mean we'll see Masquerade just jumped in as well as Banana Age So Mochik and Casper here playing for Chili Mountain today We currently got Hanzo and obviously it's Easter right now I think that has something to do with it uh, If I remember correctly then Dino was earlier talking a bit about it Because normally there are some pretty strict rules when it comes to who is allowed to sub for a team and who isn't And I think they loosen those rules a bit for the day because again, it's the Easter weekend And that just means that some of the players won't be able to make it now gonna be blunt with you I don't give a shit about Easter couldn't care less holidays don't apply to me anyways I mean I always have to work being in a holiday or not so whatever But for a lot of the players Especially when you're still living at home or in the same city and then of course friends and family become a big deal and yeah, That's something that has been taken into consideration here by the organizer. But we got Muradin and we got Urel. We also have a Vala early pick for the red team. So that immediately uh, begs the question, double support yes or no? But we are on Battlefield of Eternity, so we could see a standard, well, previously standard, arrow build to burn the Immortal down. But then again, you can also go for the auto attack style, can try to lock those hits in, have two supports, try and protect you. So that is still an option. We've seen it plenty of times. Could be another one that we have here. And yeah, we'll see what they're gonna gonna run. But for now it's ban time, so Sylvanas gets banned. And what are we getting from uh, the blue team? What are they banning out here? I mean, there's still the main tank that you can ban if you wanted to. I mean, technically, maybe even the Zarya composition would work with Vala, so that's uh, another thing to consider. Well, they ban out Tyriel though, so that Tyriel, Blaze, double layer of defense is something that we don't have now. But yeah, lots of subs today here in uh, in the matches. So that will have a bit of an impact on how these things play out. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting start into the group stage, honestly. In total we have four matches each play day. So the course over the next, I want to say, two weeks. We have that round robin playing out, and then there's a gauntlet, and then of course we are moving closer and closer to the main event in Paris. Keep in mind, in total, there's 12,000 euros of uh, prize money on the line. Malfury and Liming, and that pretty much answers our question. So we're not going to see the uh, double support solo damage Vala composition. Liming instead for mind talk. And I assume we're going to get a no. Hello, Hiccup. Whew. We're gonna get the normal main tank here. Chromie and Anna. We got Chromie a lot in uh, Meta Madness as well. And with Banana and Anna, you have now Chromie Nano Boosted. Yeah, and obviously you have a stun. You have multiple stuns actually. You have like a pushback too. You have the temporal loop very likely. So there's a lot that can really tee things up for Chromie. And our last pick is Uther. So we actually get a double support. Uther doubling as a tank. 
So Vala can go into the auto attack if she wants to. Now keep in mind, quite often we are still getting the arrow build on Battlefield of Eternity, but lately the auto attack style has dominated. So balls are still possible. Well, let's jump straight into map number one and figure out what the teams are playing here. Ending for Ruby against Chili Mountain. Game number one, everybody! It's showtime! Battlefield of Eternity is the map, and it's time to figure out which of these two teams takes the lead in the series. We have Vala with the order attack build, no arrows for hat. But first of all, on the left side in blue, Dino with Chromi Modchek, aka Farazan, playing on Hanzo today, subbing in. Same, of course, true for the URL player Casper, Banana on Ana, and Masquerade on Murden. On the right side of the map, we got my Talk on Liming, Hat as mentioned on Vala, Galnagulna is playing Uther, we got Baby Houdini on Blaze, and Cascon is playing Malfurion. And it is time to see what Vala can pull off here. How's the stacking going? Alright, uh, so what are we getting from this? Uh, nothing insane on the level 1 talents. We uh, got the Force Armor over here. I mean, Mind Talk has his own style of playing Liming. So we'll see if he goes down that path again. First and foremost, they're trying to whittle hit point pool of Muradin down a little bit with success, I might add. But the same is also happening to Uther. So we have two supports now at the bottom of the map supporting the two damage dealers. And Vala is getting her stacks together. 12 stacks early on. So far so good. Gotta be a little bit careful here, obviously, with the vent. But yep, Stormbolt. And she's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and the Dwarf didn't make it for much longer, so he's a perfect target for Vala to get some stacks together, but it seems like Uther, at least, is slightly in trouble as well, so bad for him. Top side, we got Baby Houdini playing it out against Casper. So, yep, someone's freezing the lane here, making this a little bit easier for himself, as we're having the bot lane attack now. The camp's, of course, now on the map, and that means that both of the teams will slowly try and get a bit of a lead there. But I like these lockdowns against Muradin. The problem is that Uther is dying here, but Muradin has to move out, and they still take the camp. And with the amount of stacks that Va- Oh, ha, ha, ha. Woo! <laughs> yep, Anna just got wrecked. That's a problem, though. That shouldn't happen. Vala was a little bit overconfident here and, well, got murdered by Chromie, so that's 5% of the attacks being already gone. That is not a smart move by Hat. That, is, that was avoidable. That shouldn't have happened. Absolutely love though that they just dropped the uh, <laughs> that they just dropped Vala the way they did. I mean, she just exploded. That was a wrecked all and a half. Uther down, and well, that's now three kills to one and an early level four. But yeah, they really hate Anna, don't they? Not only did they kill her, they dropped her off the platform. <laughs> It's a little bit surprising how quickly she was back. She had to climb all the way up there. And also kudos to Granny. If you can still pull that off at uh, that old age, I mean, good for you. Good for you. Leg strength. Really, really important. Another reason why you should never skip leg day, by the way. Like, it's actually kind of funny because in old age, one of the most important things is that you still have the leg, uh, leg strength, you know, to, like, get up. And that's something that a lot of people are neglecting, so you gotta be careful with that. Uh, Uso! And okay, so he's still alive, he's fine. Riding on his star horse over here. The Nexus Mule. <laughs> but we got Vala by now with 41 stacks. At this point, Hat has to make up for the death that he already suffered at the hands of Chromie. <laughs> Poor Muradin. <laughs> Masquerade is sitting there like, I just want to play the game. Root, sleep, eh, stun. Eh. <laughs> just can't move his hero at all. Okay, so yeah. And Muradin is again in trouble. I mean, he is having a problem in half here. Look at that poor guy. Gets slowed, gets attacked. Anna's trying to keep him in play. And Masquerade makes it out. Banana and Ana obviously helping quite a bit too. But, well, with that, we now have still a slight advantage for the blue team on the Immortal. But they could bring that back now. Oh, ho, ho. Uther, no. Uther getting murdered over here. The Lightbringer. The Lightbringer. Maybe because he sees light at the end of the tunnel. 
Like, I don't know. But yeah, he got crushed and that's a 50% shield that he's running now. So, there's that. We got also on uh, level 7. I mean, we have level 7 first of all for Chili Mountains. So that's probably the first thing to really point out here. With level 7, they are now in a position where they can easily make their move towards the Immortal and try and capitalize on the extra talent that they have over the opponent. Uh, so, that's another thing to check out here. Either way, now that the attacks are coming, we have, <laughs> yeah, the sidewall opened up. If Murden can tee it up for Chromie, like this one for example, yeah, Uther is having trouble. He nearly died again. I honestly don't understand how he survived it. But he already died three times, that was more or less number four. So yeah, Vala also going to the hot pursuit now, Murden again being attacked. Now, he didn't die yet, but he got pretty much pressured earlier. No temporal loop, by the way. We're going into the sand thingy at this point. And where's the stun? I was honestly looking at Uther for a second. I was waiting for the storm bolt. <laughs> I mean, he has a pretty majestic beard as well. It's maybe not quite as awesome as Muradin's, but it's there nonetheless. But I was really looking at Uther and I was like, why is he not throwing his storm bolt out? It's like, come on, dude. Like, she's right there. Just hit it. That's a kill. And I was like, oh, wait a second. Wrong hero. So, yeah. 60 stacks for Vala. She's fine. I mean, waiting for Gloom here, obviously, on level 13, so that she can withstand those pressure plays from Chromie a little bit better. Uh, Muradin has already been sniffed out. Good job by Kaskor. Definitely checking on the bush time and time again. What's going on here? Yeah, oh, and there's another potential kill on Volo! But Hat is looking good, she. Yeah, able to survive here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that got close here. So Farazon got nearly murdered too. We're talking about murdering things. Hat is just getting attacked and attacked and attacked and again. Chili Mountain, they really want him, right? So they are moving in very heavily for Vala. They are more than a half a level ahead, by the way, in experience. Stormbolt hits and Hat is dead. Yeah, these follow-ups are just a bit too much for her to handle, and that's 10% of the attack speed now gone. So, yeah, that's a problem. They're gonna lose their top fort now, especially since level 10 abilities are hidden for Chili Mountain. They are starting off well. This is a best of two, so on map number one, it's looking very, very good for them. Ural is getting attacked at the bottom of the map, but let's face it, Casper still has his ult to play around with, so even if they are able to lock him down for a bit longer, the ult will prevent him from dying. Big arrow, by the way. The arrow out of nowhere. Now, can they follow up on that? It seems like they can. Yeah, Uther is dead again. Galnagulna is gone. Muradin got nano boosted here. And uh, Vala, I mean, again, she has 75 stacks now. But they still don't have level 10 abilities. So they are helplessly watching as Chili Mountain drops the Immortal. So easy kill on that. Yeah, well, what else do we got? We got with level 10 abilities, Inting for Ruby slowly getting a little bit closer to that point, but they're not there yet. Now, Uther has his Divine Shield up. That's definitely something he can use uh, to save Vala. I would still expect Malfurion to go into Tranquility. I'm not quite sure if I like the Twilight Dream here. I'm not sure how much he can get out of this. Tranquility would have probably been a little bit better in my book. So far, the double support hasn't really helped them that much. Mirrodin is finally dead, but Vala died too. So that's now the third death of her. Which means that 15% of the attack speed bonus are gone from the Gambit part of a level 1 talent. They are getting the stun and the root on Farazan. And yeah, he just got checked. So that's Hanzo down. Now, they still have that Immortal at the bottom of the map, but the top fort has obviously fallen already. So now they're aiming for the second one. And they're aiming for Chromie! And she's dead. Yeah, no bye-bye for her. That's not happening anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, no chance. So, in this case, Hat, he's still doing his best. I mean, he's sitting at 15,000 damage, which isn't too shabby. It's nothing great either. Since they have a double so uh, double um, tank, uh, not double tank thingy, um, double damage uh, dealers. E dude. <laughs> I mean, again, in an ideal world, what you want to do, even if you stack a little bit less, you want to keep your attack speed because that is synergizing extremely well with your level 16 and your level 20 talent. So, that's first and foremost the most important thing but if you die if you have two damage dealers at least you know it's not the end of the game yet so as long as hat is stacking okay-ish 
he will get the damage out. Now, he is missing out a bit on the potential that he would have had, especially with the level 16 talent, but it's getting somewhere. Now, seems like we're gonna have a potential kill up here. Ooh, uh, Masquerade. Ooh, damn, he missed that one hard. Even the bunker had to be used here. Just trying for more. Can they go to mirror then? Nah, he hops out. Big arrow again. Nice. Second one that hits hard. This time... Oh, 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 oh. That was nearly a kill on Vala. That might still be a kill on Vala. Vala is just trying to somehow get away from all of these sand blasts. And the dragon's breath that is hitting everywhere. So, yes. Nicely done. Yeah, good shit. So, seven kills, two, four. And off we go. Yeah, by the way, we got also a bit of an update on the Quasar. So apparently it was not some family obligations around Easter. Apparently his train was two hours late. I had no idea that he's traveling with Deutsche Bahn. So, yeah. But I can definitely sympathize. Uh, Deutsche Bahn puts the light to uh, the good old prejudice or... Uh, thingy that Germans are always on time. For most Germans that might be true. It's definitely not true for the Deutsche Bahn. Thank you for traveling with Deutsche Bahn. We are always late, but we are arriving at some point. We think. Maybe. Can we help you? No? Thank you. We are thinking, we are thinking. What are you thinking about? We are thinking about Muradin and him dying, but he still doesn't die. Nice bunker though. But they are getting the kill here. Anna is dead by the way. That was a nice lock from Bala that we got there. So good shit. And she has her level 16, of course. Nah, she doesn't have a level 16. I'm lying again. We got Cannoneer on uh, level 13. And, of course, Gloom. And that definitely helps a little bit. So, yeah. Nice. But again, with the bot lane fort still in play, somehow, the blue team is once again ahead on the Immortal. And can they get a hit on Blaze? He doesn't have the bunker. The man needs help. Help. Help! He needs healing! Jeez! Jeez Louise! Poor Houdini! Come on, someone else needs to help the man. Had also been in trouble. He's on 99 stacks. So, one more and we are gonna have him at a solid 100. 7 kills to 5 by now. Damage output, 33,000 for Liming. Ming. Top damage is still Hanzo and Chromie. But they're trying for kills. I mean, they're really losing out on the objective time and time again. They need to do something about the team fights at least. But there's another arrow. Bunker's already gone. They just can't defend this. I don't see a way for them def to defend this, honestly. They can maybe try and remove the shield a little bit. But they're gonna lose out on the Immortal eventually, or so you would think. Especially now that Blaze is dead. But even before that, with Chromie just attacking from a distance. Yeah, next hit is coming. Good stun. Hat in trouble, but I guess they're gonna get out here. And what the fuck is Dino doing? <laughs> Dino! Yeah, he's dead. Dino is dead, and I guess they're gonna get Masquerade too, but of course the Immortal is falling in the meantime. Uh, Dino was kinda caught on uh, behind enemy lines, you would say. So yeah, a few more stacks for Vala, that's finally a kill, but it doesn't change the fact that this is gonna be 100% on the shield. They're delaying things a little bit to give Chromie and Muradin a chance to come back as they're pushing, but the second that they're seeing the red team doing damage, they will go and lock it in. But yeah, Usa is the one starting to attack it. And is that going to trigger the attack from Hanzo? Not yet, so they're waiting this out a little bit more. There it is. And booyah! Taken. Uh, okay. So, we got 8 kills to uh, 7. It's actually a lot closer than I would have expected on the kill count. And level 16 talents for both of them should be there too. There's the ult for Yorel already. Um, stuns and Casper might be in trouble. Still able to jump away a little bit, but the slows are there. Yeah, he's in real deep shit. So that's a kill and that arrow came too late. It still arrives, but Dino is now also getting murdered. So that's another kill and all of a sudden, we have the red team ahead in kills and also in level 16, which finally gives us the Manticore for Vala. And also the Firefly is for Liming. Yeah, Mindhawk has this very special approach to Liming 
and he is sticking to it with it. Has been sticking for a long for a long time now. We currently got 150 stacks nearly for Creed of the Hunter here on level 1, so the damage is definitely increasing for Vala too, when Addiction is in. And they didn't lose too much against the Immortal, especially considering that the shield was nearly at 100%. So, yeah. Inting for Ruby is fighting back here. And they are now trying to finally get one of the forts. Because so far they haven't done any real structural damage. I mean, they haven't taken a single fort down. They lost the wall at their own key, but yeah, very limited success here on anything else. So they definitely got to figure something out and it seems like they're currently trying to siege up at the bot lane a bit. It's a 5 versus 5 again though. That makes things a little bit tricky for them. Mm, yeah. I mean, Hanzo is still padding his stats a little bit. The rest of the team is currently just trying to trap them. I don't think anybody is gonna fall for that. Uh, I mean, the camp is up, so if at any point Caspar feels like he should check it out, then okay. But they're not even... Okay, so they're starting to check this a little bit. Vision has been granted. Now, it's still a battle for level 20 and for the experience to get there. But I guess the damage output that we're getting from heroes like Vala is now slowly going to increase considering her circumstances. Yeah, Blaze with a quick bunker. Stun against Muradin. Uh, what about Vala? Can she get some extra damage out here and pat her stats a little bit? Getting a few more stacks together for maybe the 200 would be neat. But they're going for the camp first. Now there is now catapult pressure slowly but steadily mounting up in favor of Chili Mountain. So that's something we should not forget about. Since 16 minutes in it means that those catapults are slowly starting to hurt. So yeah, it's not instantly going to be... A quick hit here or anything, but that's definitely going to happen eventually. Chromie firing again already, making sure that she's anchoring all the sides. And well, there's the play for Yorel. Ult is up though, and everybody is just centering around the Immortal and taking a whole lot of poke here. It's going to be difficult to heal out over time. The two supports, of course, make it easy for now. But still. Yeah, they are, in this case, pulling even a little bit ahead on the Immortal. Or trying to. Muradin stunned out. Vala with a few more hits. But there. Oh, the arrow! Urel pushed Vala out of the arrow. Or that could have been a prolonged stun and kill. So, yes. I guess in this case, Hat has to thank Casper for saving his life. The bunker's up again. Halftime show is over. And things get worse. Because down here, that keep is going to fall. So that's definitely a problem. It's exactly what I talked about earlier. The catapults are really hurting at this moment in time. Now, there is a fort that has been dropped at the top lane. So we should probably talk about that too. Or oh, Ana goes down. So maybe a step into the right direction. It might be a bit too little too late. Let's not forget that the core is also getting attacked. Those catapults are still in play. And at the top side, Casper is now dealing with the situation as is. But yeah, down here. And... Once again, uh, that guy is just inting. That guy is just inting. Yeah. How long has Blizzard not fixed this shit? Five years? Five years or so? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. We got the fucking medallion they came in with weather, uh, but they couldn't fix that. It's such a joke, honestly. But yeah, anyway, so now, good for the red team. They didn't take any damage on the core. They would have, for sure, even if just a little bit, if not for that little interplay here. But now we have 10 kills to 10, and what's worse is the level 20 talent is going to hit them just as they're pushing through the top for the keep. So, yeah, there's that. 60,000 damage for Li Ming. We got 68,000 for Hanzo. Honestly, I shouldn't even uh, complain about Blizzard not fixing this because the, the truth of the matter is they probably don't even know about it since they're not watching their own games. So, and they're not playing it either. So, they just don't know. Someone needs to tell them and then they might fix it, you know? But, like, in order to fix something, you first of all need to know that it's broken. And, well, we shouldn't expect too much here. <laughs> you think they're playing their own game? <laughs> Give me a break, guys. So, here comes the hits. Masquerade. Ah, they're getting the kills in. 
And that is problematic now. Or at least they're biting out the bunker. The kill isn't there yet, but they're definitely getting close. So it's bad news for the red team. Seems like they're going to lose the game right here. Level 20 talents are in. And the core is slowly falling. Now at least they were able to take down the immortal. But the problem is that Uther is already dead. Hat is trying to take the kill. Oh, but Mochek is still alive. Is begging for healing on Anna's side, didn't get any, but with Blaze now falling, Chromie has died, Masquerade is still trying to end it. They might not end here. I don't think they can end. <laughs> They're actually not ending. Yep. Can they kill Casper? Imagine them killing everybody and going cross map to end the game. Now, I'm just joking, they can't. They don't have that that amount of time. That's not a thing. Especially since Vala has to deal with the bottom of the map. As you can see, there's way too many catapults that would move for the core. So that's another problem. And, well, I guess they are only... At the end of the day, I think the only thing that they're doing here is delay the inevitable. They would have to win more or less every single team fight from here on out. And big time. In order to prevent the core from falling. Because... Both of the keeps are gone. Blue team still has a fort at the bottom of the map, which means that they have total lane control through the catapults. And, yep. That's a huge problem. So, yeah, As you can see here, we currently have one camp even claimed by the blue team, despite the fact that they had three of their heroes missing. That does not help. Ah, 70,000 damage for Li Ming, who hasn't died, by the way. Li Ming and Malfurion, interestingly enough, are the only two heroes that haven't died even once. So, yeah. Mm, and on the left side, okay. Farazon is still poking this out a bit, but they're already going for the Immortal. And of course, now you can't lose this one. They have to attack. They need to go for the team fight. I don't even know why they are fighting for the halftime show. You know, at this point, you just need to YOLO it. You don't have time. You're running out of time. Catapults on every lane, 22 minutes in, the camp as well. The only chance that you have is force a fight quickly. And it's a Hail Mary move, obviously. I mean, you're having, you literally have to invade your opponent. And it's not very likely to work. But there's no other way for them to try and turn this around. They gotta do it. Again, another arrow that hits four of them. So yeah, they're sacking pretty hard. And Hanzo is taking full advantage of that. But yeah, it's still heavily problematic here. All right, nearly 200 sacks for Vala too, by the way. So she's getting a little bit closer to her next quest reward. Might at least get that. But here are the Winions. And I don't know what to tell you guys, but this is going to end the game if nobody moves back. I guess they're sending Blaze back now, but that also means that he can't defend the, the Immortal. Yeah, this is just bad news because now the blue team is aggressively pushing in. They know it's a five versus four. They take Uther down. He has Redemption still up, so he'll be back. But I'm not so sure about the Immortal. And, yep, we still have the camp pushing the bot lane. And the next Catapult is soon moving in. 208 stacks by now for Vala. But it's rough. It's honestly rough. 82,000 damage. 100,000 on Hanzo. Six-digit club already. Is that really the first Immortal they're gonna win? No. Uther is dead and this time for good. Doesn't have redemption anymore. Another arrow and Vala is dead too. Now they're just trying to clean house. They're going for Uther. They drop him. So that's another one eliminated. The Immortal is gone as well. Baby Houdini bites the dust that leaves only Li Ming alive. I'm just kidding. She's gonna die too. So yeah. That's a five man team wipe to end game number one everybody. So... The lead for the blue team as they are moving in for the core. Good for them. Nicely done. And yeah, pretty sweet. Sweet victory here as Team Chili Mountain locks in the W on Battlefield of Eternity in this best of two. GG. Well played. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV.
All right, here we are, everybody. Chili Mountain has the lead as we are heading into Alderac Pass, a map in number two. Again, this is a best of two. So if you are taking the series with a 2-0, you get three points. If you're tying with your opponent, each gets one. And if you lose, you don't get anything. Again, the ban on uh, Tracer. This time, by the way, Dequaza is with the team. So he was actually like watching the first map, apparently on his phone, while he was on his way back home. His train that got delayed by two hours or something. That's why he didn't make it in time to join map number one. But he was just like commentating on the match, me like, all right, guys, 10 more minutes. Uh, I'm going to be there. And now they can play with him to strengthen the team a little bit. Which means that they only have one sub at this point, which is Modcheck. And Rega band on Alterac. I mean, big map, obviously, once again. The Globals are playing a role here with the Haka and Falstead very likely being addressed during the draft. Blaze gets banned. Now that Dequaza is back, you want to get rid of his Blaze as quickly as you can. So there's that. But, yeah. yeah I'm a bit curious what we are now getting from uh, Indic for Ruby. And by the way, I'm saying it again because I know the question is going to pop up a thousand times in the next couple of weeks. But yes, it seems that Chili Mountain picked up Team Wah, that they have some kind of like deal with them now. Or oh, I'm not sure if it's only a sponsorship deal. Like what happened in the past a couple of times is that Team Wah and others like joined up with Chili Mountain to get let's say a trip sponsored or to uh, get the hotel paid for and last year's Masters Clash I know that the players had to pay for the trip out of their own pockets so Masters Clash didn't actually uh, come up for all of that so I assume that there is a similar deal in place here too because initially the blue team qualified for the event as team Wah! and I guess that they are already anticipating that they will make it to the offline event so my assumption currently is and I I'm guessing here that they again have a deal with Chili Mountain where Chili Mountain says alright you play under our name for the tournament and if you make it to the main event we'll pay your travels or the hotel not sure if Masters Clash is paying one of those but yeah that's normally how a lot of these deals go these days so uh, I very highly doubt that there is some salary involved here just so that you guys are aware but as we're heading deeper into the draft, we got Lucio and Anubarak now, so it seems that they're going to go for the quick rotations on Alderic Pass. Big map, obviously, so it makes sense. We got Dehaka, as anticipated. He's going to play a role here. Together with Hogger, so already a double front line that they're running here, with the main tank still missing, and we got Hat on Tigers. Okay. Yep. And there's the birdie. False set gets banned. They lock in their global. They ban the bird. And they're just like, all right, you're out. You're not happening anymore. Mm -hmm. And what do we get now from uh, Dainu boys? Come on, ladies. We need a solid damage shield. Something that's a bit fun. Tracer's banned. I get it. But right, give us something to work with here. Hanzo again. Okay. And we get D.Va. <laughs> I find it kind of wild that especially after the Master Slash now, some of the heroes that had a huge impact there are now getting played a bit more again. I'm not saying that they're all of a sudden pushing their way into the meta, but at least they're, they're getting some value. A little bit more than before. So we saw that on the previous map with Chromie. She doesn't get played that often in uh, normal games these days, but yeah, got played there too. And then Masquerade here. Diva, Varian and Stukov. So they already go for a bit of a killer comp with the taunt into Stukov's lurking arm. But that also means that Tychus is their own only real range damage dealer. And the final pick. What are we getting for Mochek? Now he could still play Hanzo of course. But well the Mephisto one trick gets his Mephisto. So Alderic pass everybody. The 1-0 lead for the blue team. Let's jump straight in and see if they can lock in a second victory. Or if Indic for Ruby is going to tie this one up. Game number two on the left side, Dainu playing Hanzo, Modcheck on Mephisto, Banana H on Lucio, Dequaza on Diva, and Masquerade playing Anubarak. Over on the right side of the map, we currently have ending for Ruby, still looking for... Ooh, the hell is that? 
High King's Quest on Mine Talk's variant. Okay, this just got interesting. Mine Talk is not playing the main tank for them, so we're probably going to get a lot of screaming in this game. Seems like we're not going to get taunt. Galdeguna on a Hogger. We got Hat on Tykes, Kaskan on Stukov, and Baby Houdini is playing a De Haka. Yeah, that's uh, going to be interesting. So, already got to throw this out. Not a fan. <laughs> but. I'm here for the show. So, yeah, I'm totally happy to, to watch this. And who knows? Maybe he is going to have some impact on this one. I always feel, honestly, that whenever we're seeing Varian with something else but Taunt, I kind of want it to be Meme Blades. Just because it would be funny as hell. The It, it always feels like Smash just doesn't do enough. And meme blades don't do a whole lot either, if your opponent has any stuns, but they're at least fun, so yeah. That, by the way, was kind of nice. Ran straight into the tongue. Baby Houdini, yeah, shows him how it's done. And that's an easy first blood for inting for Ruby. Awesome. So yeah, good stuff. I like it. We got the camp addressed instantly. This is obviously what you gotta do, right? So every single time that the camp is up, you gotta go for it outside of it. This is the only camp on the map outside of the bosses. So it's the most important thing that you have to center your actions around. And the blue team is doing the same thing over there on the left side. All the way up at the top. We got Dino still poking and prodding. And with level 4 getting a little bit closer. We're gonna get the choice of a variant. I mean, we all expect Smash at this point. It's not going to be Taunt, not with that level 1. And so it should be it should be Smash. So a little bit of yelling. Uh, yep, there's a little 4 talents already for the blue team as we're getting in the bed of barbs. We also got the serrated arrows. Yep, defending in the middle. Varian, as expected, goes for the Smash. And there's going to be a lot of yelling involved in this game now. Yep, already tries to go for the first one I get. Nope, not quite. <laughs> Just on the run here. Oh boy. Alright. So that means that we do not have a whole lot of CC for them. I mean we got some on the Haka, but they don't they're honestly lacking the reliable stun at this point. And not having a frontliner that can help them to just get the stun connected for the bigger they are to completely run through and then Varian coming in for a final hit, so to say. So that's a bit of a problem. Yeah, Dino taking down Varian, so that's an issue. And now just playing the vision game, and he gets away! Yeah, Dino got the kill, spray game is on point two, and that's a dead Varian. And all the yelling in the world is not gonna help him there. So that's a good start for at least Hanzo in his performance. I'm trying to get the same now done on hat two, and he dies. So that's the second kill for the blue team. Yeah, so far so good. The boys are putting some works in. This is not too bad. Dequaza rushing away here. Everybody else already working on the objective, which is actually kind of rare. Normally when we're talking about the prisoner camp, it's level 7. Sometimes even level 10 until the teams make a serious effort on this. Now, to be fair, when you have a Nubarak, you can try and cheese it a little bit. He can easily move in, spawn a couple of beetles and try and sneak in a few extra seconds for them. And that's more or less what's happening here too, with the exception that there's a couple more heroes just helping him out just in case that they can lock the entire thing in and it's not looking too bad either so 0 0.9 seconds no interrupt ah they're missing out on it just now but there's a level 7 talents and we now got the relentless soldier in yeah, stuns are of course still there for Nunubrak also with the bed of barbs and the impale he's just sitting there now here comes the Haka and that's a dead Lucio nice Lucius done good stun and the kill. Diva kill against Tychus. Stunned into the explosion. So yeah, job well done. Okay. So with that, we now have at the bottom of the map another problem. Oh nice! Dino got murdered. Good stuff. Yeah, that looked like a potential kill against Hogger. But Galdigulna is still alive and they were able to take Dino down. He was hoping for the quick kill and couldn't get it. So well played. Nicely done. Yeah, mind talk again. Sitting there solo. Come on, give me, give me the the smash. Give me the smash. No. Nope. 
Yeah, he's a little bit lazy today. All right, so maybe now. Yeah, still not. Again, I would love to coupled with the stun. But again, bosses are up on the map now. It's only a matter of time until Dino is gonna jump on one, <laughs> as usual. Doesn't matter what hero he plays, he always wants to go for these. Yeah, already interrupting Masquerade here. Uh, it's 0 0.9 seconds. <laughs> Sounds a little bit like he has a toothache, honestly. Like every single time that Varian like lets out the scream, you know that the man is in pain. So either it is a toothache or it's just him venting all that frustration and sorrow of realizing uh, what a disappointment of a son Anduin is. It's like one of the two. Take your pick. And Anduin dies. So Anduin is dead too. The arrow misses initially, but they got the kill and they also get the prisoner camp now. Nobody's interrupting that and yep, there we have it. Horde pulled is being used as they're trying to jump a bit deeper to get some kills in. And Inuburak, yeah, good shield from Lucio. Well done by Banana. That was actually solid. That could have been multiple kills against the blue team if not for the ult that he just put out there. So, yeah. And in the meantime, we got topside Dayquaza doing his work. Taking down the first fort before those cavalries are even arriving. Four kills to three. So at least on the kill count, it's pretty even. But I guess they're gonna lose at least one more fort here. Or uh, oh, they're gonna be severely damaged. So, yeah. But either way, down to the bottom of the map. We have Dino now poking this a little bit. Trying to give us some cover. In the middle, this has been defeated. The Haka is dead. That's bad news. I mean, maybe instead of going for a fort, they're not going for the keep. Uh, not a bad trade, honestly. So, yeah. Okay, so off we go. And he's dead again. He is a dead again. Poor Varian. Died again. He died a lot. Three deaths already on him. And it seems like Kasko on uh, Stukov is now gonna follow. Yeah, fully surrounded, no chance of escaping. These arrows that Dino is throwing out right now are very optimistic. I'm not quite sure what he expected here, but yeah, that's the area where most of the action is taking place now. So we get a kill against Hat. Tychus is gone, but so is Anubarak. The fight isn't over yet, but with the keep just firing away, maybe they're getting a kill on Dayquaza. And Dino is still working down at the bot lane. One scream after another. So Mephisto is dead, eliminated by the Haka. The rest of the blue team gets away. And Hanzo is sitting at the bottom of the map. Pew! Pew! <laughs> and he's just getting pinged. It's like, dude, you had five minutes there. What the hell did you do? I killed the wall! Oh, please die. <laughs> Can you imagine if baby Houdini gets him? Uh, apparently not, but that would have been funny as hell. That would have been... Goal. Just imagine just sitting at the bot lane the entire time trying to get side lane value. Never really getting anything in regards to structure damage. Now, he picked up a lot of experience. So that's definitely true. They have a lead because of that. Not only because of that, but, it, but well, he contributed. But it would have been just glorious if the Haka moving in would all of a sudden resulted in him dying. Now, we got... Uh, yeah, Shattering Throw now in for Varian. We also have them working slightly on the level 1 talent, so there's that. It's getting a couple of stacks together. But with level 13 on both sides, there's still a chance. Yes! Now the arrow is a bit more on point. Well done. And the follow-up was there immediately, not only from Mephisto, but from everybody else too. Somehow, the red team still is able to get away. Anubarak dead, Tyke is dead, they're trading kills. Mine talk in trouble! And he's dead again. Two of the quest rewards hitting for his level 1 talent. 10 kills to 6. And Varian's damage output is at 21,000. That's not too shabby. I mean, it's not on... It's not on Hanzo level, but... Then again, who is, right? So he's pretty much on the same amount of damage that we're getting from Hoga. Not quite, but close enough, right? And of course, they're going for the boss now. So move straight down to the bottom of the map. Dino is already there. And they're going to take the first one. I... Yeah, I don't really think there's anything that can be done by inting for Ruby about this. They still wait for Hoga. They can now maybe try to go to the top and get a boss themselves. But it's already so late that I would expect Chili Mountain to simply rotate topside. 
and deal with it there. So here's the level 16. We get the epicenter for Anubrak and as expected, the red team is trying, but there's no rotation. Mephisto might have a bit of a look, but they are just getting value at the bottom of the map, making sure that the fort is going to fall 100%. And since they have level 16 talents too, they can at least in theory try and push this further. Maybe even damage the keep a little bit. The one at the top lane has already taken damage, so good for them. Okay. Yeah. Farazon up here, he's doing his thing. Yeah, the quest is completed. Varian, there we go. Additional 30 base damage right there. Okay. So, by now, he has a pretty solid amount of damage, at least on that. Can that change things for them a bit? Does that mean that all of a sudden he becomes a menace at the front line? Uh, I question that, but we'll see. Arrow, bunny hop, and the attack against Dainu. Chunks him down a little bit at least, but still, Dainu just solid on the, on the spray game. Puts the spray out immediately and is like, yeah, you're not going to get me, dude. Whatever you do, but I'm going to poke you down slowly but steadily. You know that in any MMO that Dino ever played, he's like that archer that just never, never lets you get close to him and just like sits, you know, in the back and is like pew pews away until you die at death of a, uh, a thousand needles. So yeah, triple kill for Mephisto. By now, he is getting closer to Hanzo's damage as well. Not quite there yet though. We have 15 kills to 6, the fort falls, and of course they have also taken the objective. So now we have cavalry on the map. They're gonna lose a shit on here. They might lose the game because right now, five man wipe, everybody's dead, and the map is wide open. They can literally go for, for, uh, for keeps and for core right here, right now. No problem for them. Big lead in experience as well, getting closer to level 20. First armor shield is already removed. I assume they have to remove the rest of them too. Varian is already back. The rest of the team is coming back too. The arrow was a little bit too early or it could have stunned them and slowed them down. But yep, that's another armor shield removed. The one at the top falls too, so that's all of them gone. Yeah, that's game. That is game. They can just right click the core and end it right here. So job well done. 10 kills ahead, a 2-0 victory for Chili Mountain and that grants them two points for the group stage. Well played. Another victory on Alderic Pass for the blue team.